Thanks everybody for coming into attendance. My name is Hunter Cookson. I'm an R&D tax credit and grant specialist at RDP Associates. Um, so what we're going to be talking about today is uh, government incentives um, in the form of tax credits and government grants for Canadian businesses or um, companies that have just recently been incorporated within Canada. So there's going to be a couple of different programs that we'll speak of today. I'll just look at you and uh, yeah. So we'll go over three different things within these slides. Um, and if we have questions at the end, then we can go over them together. Um, so number one, there's going to be tax credits, which is actually looking at costs that you've already incurred for research and development. We'll be looking at government grants as well, which is for forward looking projects. Um, and then there's another category, which is just one specific slide that we'll be able to get into uh, when we get there, which is more so uh, a contract with the government. So we can go to the next slide. So I, I categorize these into three key areas in terms of uh, funding for the government. So the first one is innovation. Uh, the second one is uh, hiring and training grants. And then the third one is export marketing. Um, that being said, within Canada, there is quite a few different funding opportunities. So there's over 90 different agencies within Canada that give out government funding. So this is why we call it the, the government funding roadmap, is it can be very confusing, um, but there's a wealth of different programs out there that we may be able to take advantage of. So for FinTech and AI, um, we're gonna be talking about just a couple different programs that may be able to assist with future projects that you may be engaging in. And again, we're gonna start off with the innovation category. So today we'll be talking about the Industrial Research Assistance Program. We'll be talking about Superclusters, which is a new initiative within Canada. Um, we'll talk about shred tax credits. This tax credit's been around since 1987. Some of you may have heard of it before. Um, it, it's quite commonly known. We'll talk about Innovative Solutions Canada and then a very new program that has not been released yet called NSERC Alliance. Who here has heard of IRAP? Wonderful, okay. So this is a program that's been around for a long period of time. So this is a federal program. So what this is for is for research and development related projects and also to commercialize your technology. Okay, so if you have a new project coming up where you're developing a new product, this could be a new fintech solution, something of that, uh, of that nature, um, IRAP could be a potential grant program to be taking a look at. Okay, so again, this is a federal program. Um, the process of this is essentially first calling the IRAP representatives and being uh, assigned an IRAP ITA. What happens from there is that you'll actually take a look at a couple of different projects that you may be engaging in that may be research and development related for future projects uh, and pitch these projects to them. So as you can see, we have uh, up to $10 million of funding for a project. Now, I wouldn't say that that's the normal amount that we're getting from IRAP or that we're, we're seeing uh, funded from IRAP. However, we see it being very much a relationship with IRAP. And what I mean by that is they usually fund one project per year. Um, but uh, that funding amount in the first year could be anywhere from fifty dollars to $150,000 depending on your overall project cost. So it's important to understand that with government grants, they're different than tax, and, uh, tax credits. So government grants are for future projects and it's very important to get approval before you start. Um, so you'll come up with an overall project cost. If you get approved through a grant funding program, they'll generally fund only a portion of that project. So with IRAP, you're looking at ballpark, usually about 50% of the project cost being covered by IRAP. Um, so this is open year round, um, but again, each individual grant program has a certain amount of funding. So, um, you know, depending on when their fiscal year starts, which is April, um, there's better times to be applying for IRAP based on uh, how much funding that they have left. So uh, innovation superclusters, we can actually go to the next slide on this one, just to give you a good example. So this is a new initiative within Canada called innovation superclusters. So there's five across Canada focusing on different things. So for, ex uh, for example, in Ontario, we have the advanced manufacturing supercluster. Um, in Quebec, we actually have uh, AI and machine learning supercluster. Now, what this is actually going for is to create an innovation ecosystem. Okay, so the Government of Canada actually has a large pool of funding within each of these individual superclusters. To be more exact, it's just below a billion dollars of funding split up between all of these superclusters. What they're looking for is for collaboration, okay? 
So they want to make sure that you're actually partnering with other companies to carry out your project. Um, they're looking for very novel, new, innovative um, technology within these industries. So they're going to hold pitch competitions, um, which means that you can actually pitch a, partic a particular project that you may be having or, or be carrying out uh, in the near future to help gain partners and to create collab collaboration. If you then submit um, uh, a proposal to have your, your project funded, um, you could get up to 44% of your project funded through the supercluster. Most people have heard about shred tax credits, I'm sure. So shred tax credits came out in late 86, early 87, I believe, within Canada. So this is a federal program. Um, but this is a tax credit, OK? So again, this is different from the government grants that we've just spoken of. This is an entitlement within Canada. So what this means is if you're doing eligible work within Canada, um, then this is a tax incent incentive that you should be able to take advantage of and get money back through. Now, this depends on if you're you know, a, a Canadian-owned company or if you're a foreign-owned company in terms of how much you will get back to the program. But the key thing to notice here is that there's no limit on the funding amount of, uh, per company. Right? So this is much more of a, of a safer uh, bet for a company because it is an entitlement. Okay? So this is submitted with your corporate taxes at the end of uh, uh, after your fiscal year end. Um, and uh, if you are a Canadian-owned company, it could be up to 35% federally that you can get back. Um, but you can still, the lowest amount that you'd get is 15% non-refundable, so it can be applied to future year's taxes. Um, so any sorts of research and development that you may be doing um, that is advancing science or technology, um, this is a tax credit that, would be, um, that you should definitely be taking a look at. So here's a, just a quick statistic as to uh, the challenges of the shred tax credit. So again, this is a very mature uh, program. Um, in around 2010, um, many companies were claiming, they were claiming a lot of different things, uh, so much so that CRA you know, hired technical staff and started auditing a little bit further. So um, this is just some, st some statistics here. So uh, in 2015, there were just over 23,000 claims. Um, of those claims filed in the GTA, 65% were reviewed. Um, of those 65, 30% resulted in on-site audits. Um, and 68% of those had some amount that was adjusted downwards, and that average amount was 43%. Okay? So this is 2015. Okay? So we saw from 2010 to 2015 a little bit of a change in how aggressive CRA was being with this tax credit, which tells us that it's just the, the way that we need to be claiming this and what we're deeming as SR and ED eligible. Um, so it, it is a we don't want to say that it's easy to get. Um, it is comprehensive, complex, uh, and a challenging uh, process, but nonetheless a very important one. Um, with the new federal budget being released just recently, um, they've made a couple of tweaks to this program that actually does make this much better for SMEs within Canada. Um, so we are seeing that this is starting to lighten up a little bit. Um, still a really great program based on the amount of money that you can get back. Innovative Solutions Canada. So this is a really interesting one. So I wouldn't call this, uh, this is not a tax credit, and it's not really uh, a grant. So what this is, the Government of Canada actually is one of the largest pur purchasers of goods uh, and services. What they do is that they actually come out with specific uh, um, calls of different challenges that they're looking to have solved, okay? Um, so one is, you know, detecting marine biotoxins, things like that. But the key thing here is that we actually, our company attended um, an Innovative Solutions Canada presentation. They're looking to actually release about 300 calls this year. So it's quite a few. And we're not seeing that they're actually very close to having that many calls. So the key point of this one is that you can actually now submit a challenge. So if you think that you're developing a technology, could be FinTech, could be AI, something like that, that you think could have big social impact to Canada, could be a potential that you actually then submit uh, an idea for a challenge and they could open that challenge up and you could apply. So they can give you $150,000 to develop a proof of concept and they can give you up to a million dollars to develop a prototype. Okay? If, if you uh, create a product that, that works, um, they, they will be your first purchaser of that. 
And Circ Alliance, this has not been released yet. Um, so this is a, a very, very new program. And what this does is it helps for, to find uh, researchers. So it partners you with universities um, to gain researchers for a very specific project. Funding amounts could be anywhere from $20,000 up to $1 million per year. Um, and again, so it's just a partnership with the university for initial research. Um, we, we're not sure exactly when this will be open, um, but it's a very, very new initiative. So I mean, projects that would be similar to those that would fit into you know, an IRAP grant um, would probably fit into uh, this criteria as well. So research and development related um, um, and for those initial stages of research. So eligible expenses, so direct costs of research, salary support for research trainees, uh, to, prefer, to perform research and related training, uh, materials, um, activities to support collaborations and uh, knowledge mobilization related to the project and activities to develop and grow the research collaborations with the partner organizations. So these are just a few of the things that would be covered by that funding. So that second uh, area that in which I first spoke of, so export marketing grants. Um, there's been a few that have now been um, uh, uh, obsolete. Um, this would be the main export marketing grant that could assist. Now this is not just FinTech or, or, or AI, it could be uh, any company that is incorporated within Canada. Um, so what this is looking at, you know, if you're using Canada as a stepping stone to then branch into international markets, this could be a grant program that does assist in uh, part of the travel costs, uh, attending trade shows, marketing materials, things like that. Um, so funding amounts can go up to $50,000. Again, um, they're never going to cover 100% uh, of the cost of this project. You're looking at up to 50% of the cost being covered through this program. Human resources and talent funding. So um, this is what I'd consider hiring grants and training grants. So Canada, Ontario job grant. So this is specifically a training grant, okay? So um, what this is looking for is any sort of skill development that you're doing with staff um, within your company, um, you could get part of the cost covered by this program. So. Uh, let's take an example. So let's imagine that uh, my company I want to skill up even the business development associates, or one or two of them, um, and I want to get them enrolled uh, by a third party uh, company that does training for this type of thing. So it's a, it's a sales course. As long as it's carried out in Ontario, I could apply to the Canada Ontario job grant prior to this. Depending on if I'm below 100 employees or above 100 employees, let's just say I'm below 100 employees, I could get 83% of that cost covered by this grant program. So it allows up to $10,000 per employee um, and is, or it's capped at $300,000 per company. So not a, insignificant. And so again, the biggest thing that we're looking for within this one is skill development for staff. So hiring programs. Now the, the first program that we spoke about, the uh, Industrial Research Assistance Program, so the IRAP program, they also have a youth employment program. Youth employment is considered ages 30 and below, okay? So it's not that it's 20 below or anything like that. So um, the IRAP program, now if you did receive IRAP funding, um, part of, the co of, of that money that uh, you get through IRAP could be used for employee salaries. So it could be 80% could be used for salaries, 50% for contract costs. So needless to say, if you actually got full on IRAP um, funding uh, for your company, you wouldn't necessarily be taking a look at an IRAP YEP. But that being said, if you didn't get full IRAP funding through, um, uh, through IRAP, um, you could take a look at the Youth Employment Program. Most of the hiring programs within Canada are looking at filling tech-related positions. So this would not qualify to hire uh, a sales associate, admin, something like that, marketing. Um, it would be for a tech-related position. So with this, you can get up to $15,000, um, and they usually cover around 50% of the cost of that hire um, within the first year. IRAP specifically is capped at two employees per company should you choose this program as a hiring grant. Career Launcher, this is a really great program. So this is a fairly new program. Again, it's a federal program. Um, and you can see that the funding amount is, is uh, you know, the exact same as the IRAP YEP. 
So this is again for any sort of tech related positions um, and can give you up to $15,000 for a new hire. We haven't seen an actual cap as to uh, how many times you can apply for a new hire. Um, I, I'm thinking it would probably be around two to three uh, new hires for your company. So this is supporting for about a six to 12 month internship with the intention that you can hire this associate full time afterwards. Um, however, that would obviously be up to you to, you to decide. Um, but the interesting thing about uh, Career Launcher is um, if you don't have a candidate um, already uh, chosen, um, you can actually, if you have your job description all lined up, you can post that on the Career Launcher portal uh, to help gain applicants as well um, uh, to potentially find new talent. OCE Talent Edge, Fellowship and Internship Program. So this in the next slide, actually you can even go to the next slide if you'd like, yeah. So, and my tax Accelerate and Elevate. So, these are two programs. One, OCE, provincial, my tax is federal. Both these programs are supporting master's level uh, and PhD level talent. So again, what this does is it partners you with the university um, to use uh, you know, either students or graduates that would be master's or PhD level. So if that is something that your company uh, needs, we would be taking a look at one of these two programs to potentially get um, uh, some sort of, uh, of grant funding for that level of talent. Um, each individual program is slightly different in um, how much funding that they will give you, but it could be anywhere from $7,500 per candidate all the way up to $50,000 per candidate. And they do have multiple streams within MyTax and OCE, of course, so there are other grant programs within that. Um, but these two specifically um, support with master's level and PhD level talent. Okay. So I know that that's uh, running through you know, quite a few grant programs really quickly. But I just wanted to actually give you guys a taste as to what is out there. So critical questions, should you apply? So a couple of the key things that we do know that we need to, to, to find out about is obviously what grant programs are going to align with what your business activities are going to be. So I know that we talked about three categories today. So innovation or R&D, hiring and training grants and export marketing grants. Some of them fall outside of that. Some of them might actually help you scale up your business. Um, some of them are, are government loans too, um, depending on which region you're in. But the key thing is understanding exactly what type of projects that you actually have upcoming in the next, you know, let's say, you know, one month to all the way to one year. Because there is a specific amount of lead time that you'll actually need to be aware of depending on which grant program you think that you should be applying for. You know, a hiring grant, you know, if you're looking to hire a new candidate, that's not going to take six months. We're looking at about a three to four week lead time to be able to spit and get approval before we actually have a new hire. However, you know, if there is a grant program that might be multi-million dollar grant programs, um, those require a little bit more effort in terms of how long the process is and what you need to have prepared to submit um, to potentially get some of that funding. So you need to be aware of obviously uh, your lead time and uh, when you should start to be applying for these programs. I mentioned it before, but the difference uh, between the tax credits and the government grants. So tax credits are an entitlement within Canada. So the SR and ED tax credit, that is an entitlement, which means that if you're doing eligible work and you're actually preparing this properly, um, you should get you know, a decent benefit from this program. Grants are not like that. Grants are not an entitlement, which means that just because you actually fit the criteria or you think that you fit the criteria for these grant programs, it does not mean that you're going to be getting any of this funding from that grant program. Um, and they don't actually even really have to give you a really great reason as to why they might deny an application for you. Which um, in itself, uh, I'll, I'll get to in a second because the applications are an incredibly important part. So what affects your chance of success? Um, so as I just mentioned, just applying for it doesn't mean that you're going to get the funding. So uh, the timing of your application, um, uh, the program IRAP, I mean, they do get their renewed budget in April. Um, and, you know, if we think about it, if they're already starting to allocate some of their funding to projects, um, later on down the line, further, you know, later in their fiscal year, it's going to be harder to maybe get an approval for, for IRAP. Um, the, the one thing that you can't control is how many other people are applying for a specific grant program as well. If there's 3,000 applicants, 
um, and there's not much money in the pot, it will be a competitive program. Um, but one big thing to think about is the application itself. And that's the really critical part. So not just being able to identify what's a good grant program for you based on what you're working on, but how do you create this application? Because a lot of times what companies will do is they'll talk about the technology that they're building. And I'd say that's about 30% of what that application should be outlining. The, the other 70% should be social impact to Canada and the benefit to Canada. You know, is it going to create jobs? You know, if you're actually to carry out this project, what does it mean for Canada? Right? So they want to see that there's going to be a, a return on investment as well. They want to know that what you're going to do with that money and that when you carry it out, it's going to work. Um, so being able to use specific wording, tell a story with these applications is one of the most critical parts in my mind. It's so biased, I guess, coming from, from me because I work for a company who does this, but with or without a consultant, in my mind, it should always be uh, part of a business plan for your company, especially within Canada. Um, Canada gives out uh, quite a bit of money in grant funding annually. And again, uh, you know, just to go back to what I said initially, um, is that there's over 90 different agencies that actually give out grant funding. Now, that's a ton. Um, now, it's not like you know, every business project is going to be able to fit into all the criteria of the 90. Right? But there's a lot out there that you should be aware of because a lot of times companies may be leaving money on the table. Um, again, with grants, it's really important to also understand what's out there based on what you're working on because a, a lot of times these also work on a call basis, which means that if you did not submit an application within the window of time that they're actually accepting them, then it might be too late. So uh, every company in my mind should be able to take a look, whether it be at the beginning of their fiscal year or whenever they're starting to plan uh, new projects, is to say, okay, well, let's define our projects and what our main goal is for this year. And then how do we leverage government funding as a whole? Whether that be through tax credit programs, grant programs, if government loans is something that you're looking at, that's, that's another area of opportunity. But it's to take a, a broad, uh, I guess, approach as to what you can leverage here. Another great thing about this is it also helps private funding. You know, so if you've gotten you know, a seed round or a series A, something like that, um, you can make that money go further with the help of government funding as well. And so that's it for today, yeah.